Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for another Good Golly Butchcraft video. Today I'm going to be uh, going for a bit of a walk around the local woods and I'll be giving you just a quick introduction to the fauna and flora of northern Lapland. The forest here consists mainly of downy birch and Scots pine. Both of these trees have more uses than 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 you could possibly imagine uh, from making tar for treating woodwork construction uh, the inner bark of the pine tree has been eaten in times of famine uh, birch obviously an excellent fire lighter uh, the, the bark of bigger trees can be used for a, for a roofing material ground layer consists of mosses, lichens, reindeer poo, <laughs> uh, we have bilberries, lingonberries, a whole host of different berries. Here we have a wood ant nest. These guys are just waking up after a long winter. If you can see them there, they are they are edible. But they contain a lot of a lot of exoskeleton and uh, not all that much nutrition. Far better are the eggs. They taste the vinegar. The eggs can be harvested by throwing the contents of the nest onto a tarp and the ants will carry the eggs to a fold in the tarp to protect them from the sunshine. This works on a sunny day, it's also very destructive but uh, as if you're hungry and you need sustenance then it's a good, a good survival technique. Here we have witch's beard, another favourite food of the reindeer. Like the reindeer moss. Reindeer moss is a lichen, by the way, not a moss. So I'm going to pick a little bit of this and let's have a closer look. American wild food guru Green Dean says you should only ever eat untreated lichen uh, in an extreme survival situation because though it won't kill you, you will probably wish that it had have done. Uh, it can cause bowel upsets and a lot of a lot of rather severe problems. Uh, we have several that are treatable: the reindeer moss, the best of which being the Icelandic moss, and also the witch's beard. Which the witch's beard we can nibble on it. Uh, they all contain carbohydrates, various vitamins. Uh, not very tasty. The way you treat them, you can soak them for a couple of days in either wood ash or baking soda, then rinse them thoroughly, and then they should be okay to eat. Uh, also, another obvious use of the witch's beard is as a tinder. Uh, the problem with it is it absorbs a lot of moisture from the atmosphere, and I would guess. I would guess I probably won't be able to get this to light. In the winter it's great. In the winter, when it's cold weather, there's no moisture in the atmosphere, then this makes an awesome tinder. Well, let's see. It's been raining the last couple of days. I really didn't expect that to work. Not only did it light, 
I also struggle to put it out. Wow. While we're talking Tinder. Birchbark is one of the more popular ones. We also have a lot of heather on the ground layer, which to my mind makes one of the one of the better teas. I'm also rather partial to juniper. I can't see any here. The pine needle tea is obviously one of the better known ones. The mammals we have here, and on this little hill in particular, we have a lot of arctic hare, or mountain hare, as we like to call them back in England. Uh, here, it doesn't particularly live in the mountains, it lives in lowland forest and a lot of other places. It'll come into the, into the centre of towns and villages, even. Uh, we also have elk or moose, whichever you want to call it. Uh, for the Americans, what you call elk, we call wapiti. Uh, this is changing. Everybody's calling elk moose nowadays. I'm just a bit awkward and old-fashioned, you know. Uh, we also have, in this hill in particular, we have a lot of roe deer. Like a lot of roe deer. And they've only come into the area in the last few years. And uh, naturally, uh, they shouldn't be able to survive here. Uh, they have short little legs, uh, which don't cope well with deep snow for escaping from predators. Uh, but seeing as most of the ex most of the predators have been exterminated, uh, we still have some bears, but obviously when there's deep snow, they're hibernating. And also we have snowmobile trails. Uh, and roads so the road deer they can they can get around no problem and the population is is expanding a lot and in the winter time I've seen so many tracks around here uh, they seem to like it in particular around the town uh, I suppose there's uh, an explanation for that more snowmobile tracks more roads more more food uh, Less possibility of any predators. Yeah, well. Uh, we do have a few bears. Wolverines are occasional, but in this lynx as well. But in this immediate area, we're, uh, we're really far too close to the village. And you have to go somewhere quite remote to, uh, to get any kind of large predators. Uh, we do, however, have pine martins. Uh, we have a lot of birds. Uh, not so many in the winter. Uh, you'll occasionally see golden eagle here. Uh, we have white-tailed sea eagle a little bit further away. Uh, a place called uh, Kilpis Yarvi. They, uh, they are seen around there. Uh, lots of common birds. Uh, like wood sandpiper, pie flycatcher. Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and sometimes human beings, I can hear voices. That was rather strange. That was uh, an old Finnish couple. And they started talking about birds. Uh, this was this was in 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 Finnish, and my Finnish is really rather bad. But they uh, they brought up one bird that I'd for forgotten to tell you about, which is the kukuli, the Siberian jay, which the which the channel's named after, and that's uh, a very cheeky local bird who likes to hang around campsites and uh, try and scrounge food. They're they're very very intelligent, and they're also here about seen as being a lucky bird. They bring good luck, particularly in hunting. Uh, which I guess is why they're so cheeky.
and why they get so much food. Uh, but the, they don't bring luck with fishing. I really do know that from experience. Last year's lingonberries. Sometimes this time of year, because they've been frozen all winter, these things are sometimes still good to eat. Hmm, not bad. This is Labrador tea. It doesn't look very well, but neither would you as if you'd just been frozen for six months. In North America they use Labrador tea for, obviously, making tea. Hence the name, but the European Labrador tea is actually toxic. It can cause kidney failure in extreme cases. What it is useful for is you can stand it in vodka for a few weeks and then the vodka acts as a good mosquito repellent. The Bronze Age remains of Ertzi the Iceman that was found in the Alps many years ago uh, was found along with three species of mushroom that all grow on birch and I can see two of them from where I'm standing now. This one is horse's hoof. And this one is a very unhealthy looking birch polypore. It's these three mushrooms, were chaga or tinder fungus, horse's hoof or false tinder fungus, and birch polypore. The first two, obviously, are used as a tinder. Uh, birch polypore, he, he had some intestinal problems and uh, it's still to this day used to treat intestinal problems, so he could have used it for that. Uh, it can also be charred and made into a tinder, uh, which the process for horse's hoof is quite a bit more complicated than just charring, but it can also be charred. Uh, uh, that's a whole video in its own right, but as if I don't make one, there's plenty out there, so yeah, you don't have to wait. Uh, birch polypore can also be used as a plaster. You can cut it into strips and wrap it around a, a wound, uh, a plaster, a band-aid. Uh, and also, I like to use it to strop my knives. So you can cut it into thin sections, and you can you can press them a little, leave it, leave it to dry, glue it to a board, and it makes a, a good strop. And I can hear wax wings. First wax wings of the year. That's nice. The chaga is a very important fungus. It's used for everything from every, everything from a wood dye to a potential cure for cancer. Uh, it's found growing in this area. It's not uncommon. Uh, I didn't think I'd be finding it on this little walk. I expected to find the other two birch, uh, ertzy <laughs> fungi, because they're really common. Uh, Shaga has all kinds of all kinds of medicinal properties. We generally drink it as a tea round here. It's also it's also an exceptional tinder. So definitely, uh, definitely warrants a video all of its own, if I can find some. I'm not about to win Wildlife Cameraman of the Year, but as if you can make out the bird, that's Kukali, that's a Siberian Jay. There's actually four of them knocking around, but this one's just close enough for me to get some kind of an image with my phone. Sphagnum moss. Antiseptic, absorbent, B12, 
been used as a wound dressing for many years. Used by the Inuit for nappy linings. Quite frequently used by me as a substitute for toilet paper. Useful stuff. These holes in this tree. That's from the three-toed woodpecker. A tiger forest speciality. Not really found anywhere else. Okay guys, so that's what the Lapis Forest looks like. I, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it educational. Uh, maybe some of you have been here, so maybe some of you live here. You've maybe not learnt very much. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's definitely scope for a lot more videos uh, with a lot of the plants and animals that I've gone over very briefly in this video. Well, I don't think I'll be doing a video about any of the animals i don't quite have the camera equipment for that but yeah i hope you've enjoyed the video please feel free to like subscribe and thanks again for joining me i'll see you all again next time bye for now american wild food group oh, shit American wild foods grew American wild <laughs> American wild food guru Green Dean says that eating lichen uh, you shouldn't do it unless absolutely necessary uh, because American wild foods guru Green Dean says you should only ever 